So in the first tutorial, we walked through the steps on loading up some audio effects into drum racks and creating some sends and returns. And we showed one way of doing that by going into our device browser, taking an audio effect, reverb, for example, dragging onto a drum pad, and then opening up our chain selector, going down below, clicking on I.O., and then clicking on the return button designated by the R. And this opens up our drop area for our return effects. In this case, the reverb. We simply drag it right there. But you might have noticed in doing this in the first tutorial that there's probably another way we can do it by simply dragging the effects device directly into the return drop area. Well, we certainly can if we close up our I.O., close our return, close up our chain selector, we would simply start by opening the chain selector first, going down, clicking on I.O., clicking on return, going into our device browser, our audio effects. We'll grab the reverb, and there we go. And you remember, we need to make sure that our send button's on. And now we've opened up one send. If we want to add another device, say ping pong delay, just like in the first tutorial, we'll drag that right into the drop area. And now you'll see we have both chains, A and B, and up above we have send A and send B accordingly. And now we can adjust those levels. In this tutorial, I also want to show you how we can save this as a default preset, which is really handy. It allows you to achieve a quicker workflow when you know that you've got a couple of sends and returns set up inside the drum racks so you can apply effects instantly to particular drum pads. And the way we do this is we simply go to the far left and in the title bar, just to the right of where it says drum rack, we'll take our contextual menu or we'll right click and we'll go all the way down to where it says save as default preset. We'll select that. It gives me a prompt asking me if that's what I want to do. I'll select yes. And now this is saved as a default preset in the device browser, specifically the instrument device folder under drum rack. But let's double check that. Go ahead and delete that drum rack. Now I'll go back to my browser, take my instrument device drum rack, drag it into a MIDI track, and there we go. One other thing I want to point out is we don't necessarily have to have any effects loaded in for this default preset. So for this example, I'll take those out and you'll see it'll take away the send A, send B up above as well as those effects. I'll go ahead and leave the return open, leave the eye open, and I'll leave the chain selector open. And now I'll simply go into my contextual menu and I'll save as a default preset one more time. Close that. Go back up to drum rack. Double check it. Drag it in. There we go. So either way that you want to work with this is fine. This way you've got your drop box open and ready to go. But we do have to have an effect in there to bring our sins available up top as well as our send button on the far left. Okay, so in this next section, we want to talk about mixing different sends and returns within our production using a few different drum sounds across these different pads. And you notice in the first section on this tutorial that there's a couple of different ways that we can start to set up our send and returns in the drum rack. We talked about dragging an audio effect device directly to a pad, just like this. Creating a chain by double clicking, we take the reverb and drop it right back in the audio effects window, thus creating our send. And that was one way. The other way was simply opening up our chain selector, opening up our I.O., and making sure the R for return is open, showing our drop area, and then we would drag an audio effect directly in to our drop area for our return. But you'll notice up above we don't necessarily have the column view for send A or send B and the attenuation values. That's because we don't have anything loaded into the pad, whether we double click it or not. And that's one advantage 
of just dragging directly into the pad itself gives you this information up top. So the choice is up to you of however you want to, to work with that. In this case, we'll just keep moving in the direction we were. I'll go ahead and create a second chain, ping pong delay. And now, since I've got these blank pads, it's certainly time to load up some sounds. So I'm going to go back up, quick little shortcut to close our device browser. Folders is just double click right here on the device browser button. And now I'll go to instruments, go to drum rack. I'll open that and I'll go down to the kick folder. Scroll down. We've been working, I believe, with the 707 kick drum. There we go. I'll drag that into C1. And you can see that the chain loads up with that sound. If I double click it over there to the right, there is our sample loaded up on the drum pad. Kick 707. Let's go ahead and hunt down a snare. You can also activate these folders by using your arrow left right to open and close and to move up and down within your browser. So I'll open that back up. Go down and we'll find a similar electronic type of snare. Let's take this rim 909. I'm going to put that on D1. See the second chain comes in for that pad. And last but not least, we'll take the hi-hat. Here's the hi-hat folder. Open that up. Let's go down. We'll take the 909 closed hat. Classic there. We'll put that on F1. Okay, so now we've got our sounds. I can double check those. Great. I've already got that kick pattern from our part one tutorial. So we'll go ahead and fire it off. I'll double click it. And now we'll see our MIDI note editor. I'll turn off our full button so we can get a little broader view here of what's going on. Got our velocity window here. I'll bring that down just a little bit. Quick tip, we hit shift tab to go back and forth between our MIDI note editor and our clip view and our drum rack. There we go. So let's go ahead and add with our pencil tool. Go up here to the top, turn the pencil on. We'll go ahead and add the snare. And we'll add that hi-hat. Now we'll go back. We're going to actually work with our volume for just a second. That half seems to be a little loud, so we'll turn it down here. Get a little bit of a balance. Maybe turn our kick drum up. And now let's go look at our sins. Typically on our kick drum, we might not use any reverb, but certainly on the side stick or the snare. We'll turn that attenuation up. There we go. Same thing on the hat. Let's add just a little bit of ambience on the hat. And let's go to Sin B. Remember Sin B is our ping pong delay. So we'll bring attenuation value up. And you start to hear that ping pong delay. And the same thing on the hat. And with this little triplet feel, we can start to enhance sort of a shuffle feel. Now, we can also adjust the effect of the ping pong delay just by clicking on the ping pong chain or return window. I'll take that feedback, pull it back just a little bit. Adjust some of that filtering. There we go. And now we've got a pretty good mix. Let's bring that overall volume of that hat down a little bit. We can also pan that to the left. Bring a little bit more of that delay up on the side stick. Kick drum. Reverb. And kick drum delay. And there we go. We've got three basic sounds laid across three different drum pads in our drum rack. And we've also got two sends. Send A, send B. With our adjoining return tracks down below. And that's how we mix internally inside the drum racks as opposed to working with our sends and returns 
in our session view or our arrangement view. So that's a look at how we work with sends and returns internally inside the drum rack, how we also save that as a default preset within our session view, and how we can work with multiple sends and returns as well, all inside Live 8.